Hey everyone, welcome back to my coverage of the 2022 USBCs as we're following the Spectre team. They just defeated the Beatty team in seven segments yesterday, winning by about 80 imps, and now they're on to the semifinals. So today we're going to look at their first round segment against their semifinal opponent, which is the uh, Rosenthal team. So let's jump into the hands. Alright, here's the scorecard for the first segment, and it looks like Spectre got off to a roaring start. 32 imp victory in this first segment. So the Rosenthal team here, captained, captained by Andrew Rosenthal, playing with Aaron Silverstein, and an old friend of mine, Chris Lincoln, playing with Aldad Genisar in the open room against our favorite pair, uh, my friend, John Kraniak, and his partner, Vince Demoy. And looking at the scorecard, there are a sizable number of swings in this segment, a couple of slam swings, it looks like. Uh, looks like North-South in the closed room got a little aggressive on board three, but they made it back up on board seven. Um... You know what, let's go ahead and actually take a look at board one. I know I've been focusing a lot on some of these large swings and game and slam deals, but part score battles are just as important. You can win a sizable number of imps if you win a bunch of part score battles throughout a match. So let's take a look at what happened at these tables. All right, in the open room, we have North here opening a heart. I love this bid. I think we've seen a lot of different styles from the pairs that have played in this event so far on both teams. And I know that John Kraniak and Vince Moy do kind of side with me a little bit on the idea that opening bids can be fairly light. You just need a little protection from your partner so that they don't go crazy and blast you into three no trump when you don't find a fit and you've showed a minimum opener, which could be here as light as 10 high card points. Um, so one of the reasons that we want to be opening light on these kinds of hands is that opening sooner, bidding sooner rather than later allows us to actually convey the strength of our hand. But a secondary reason is that when we have a couple different suits here, as opposed to maybe one long suit of its own where we might preempt or we might pass and then come in later with an overcall. Opening allows us to show both of our suits a lot of the time, or at least search for a fit in both suits. The one hard opening is going to fetch a one spade response from partner when he has four spades, and we'll be able to raise. That way we can find our heart fit if we have a 5-3 heart fit, we'll find a 4-4 four, four spade fit most of the time. Whereas if we pass with this hand, the best we're going to be able to do is come in with a one or two hard overcall after the opponents do something. We wouldn't really want to make a takeout double of diamonds with a five card major. So, South bids a no trump, which is announced as semi forcing. This is what I played with most of my partners as well. And East didn't really have anything to say. West here has a 16 count, but this is another added benefit of opening a little light. West might think, oh, North-South could be trying to steal this auction from us. I have 16 high card points. But there's nothing about North-South's auction so far that suggests they aren't planning to bid and make a game on this hand. So if our partner really is completely broke and the opponents do have the remainder of the 24 high card points, coming in now would just give them a free shot at plus 300, plus 500, plus 800 against a game where we have what looks like three quick tricks and we know the hearts are not uh, really going to come in for Declare. I mean, sure, Declare could take two heart finesses through our King and Jack, but we have heart length. It's likely that they'll end up in no trump and then the hearts are not going to provide an extra source of tricks for Declare. So... West, I think, made the right choice in passing, 
But this just goes to show that opening late can have some added benefits as well in these types of scenarios. I would be curious to find out if North would open this hand regardless of um, vulnerability, because being non-vulnerable, you have a little extra protection. If you do get in trouble, you're not going for 200, 500, 800. You're going to be going for 100, maybe 300 at most. Um, but OK, so South bids one no trump semi-forcing. North, with a two-suited hand, of course, wants to take this out, so bids two clubs. And South with nine highs, still thinking that his partner's two-club bid could have extra values, it could be up to about 18 high card points, wants to invite a game and bids three clubs. And this contract passes out. Once again, West, the only one who can take action, over South's three club bid, since North hasn't really denied a very strong hand yet, could still have 18 highs. So we don't want to do something like make a takeout double of clubs um, and kind of lose our footing a little bit as the opponents then have a chance to double us whenever it's really not our hand. Okay. So three clubs in the North. And let's take a look at the prospects in this contract. So East has to make an opening lead. Uh, I could see either a spade or a diamond. I think both of those are reasonable. Um, I think it's a little too risky to lead ace of clubs in a club, even though North has showed a two-suited hand. We're aware that we don't have hearts sitting behind Declare. So if Declare was planning to cross rough or take some heart finesses, we know they're going to work. Therefore, pulling trumps maybe not higher on our agenda. I would lead a diamond just because the suit's a little stronger. We have the ace of clubs in control of the trump suit. Um, so we might be able to set up a diamond trick before it goes away on uh, spades from Declare or on hearts from Declare, for example. Uh, but okay, East elects to lead a spade against this auction. I think this also makes some sense. A diamond leading away from non-touching honors is obviously a bit of a risk sometimes, and a spade is fairly passive. There is a little bit of added consideration where neither opponent bids spades in this auction. Obviously North could have a four-card spade suit, but South doesn't really have spade length here, and therefore South is unlikely to have spade strength, so maybe that's more likely to hit our partner. So that could be going through East's head when he makes the opening lead. And from Declare's perspective, we have one spade loser, one diamond loser. Uh, we have a heart finesse. We have at least the ace of clubs to lose. So, and on top of that, it kind of looks like we, well, after the opening spade lead, it, kind of looks like we should set up spades and then maybe use those to discard a heart and try and cross rough some tricks. Um, so if we are able to escape with just one spade loser and one diamond loser without needing a heart finesse, then the king, queen, nine, eight of clubs, along with north's ten, will be good enough to force out both the ace and jack, and we'll lose two clubs, a spade and a diamond for plus one ten. Uh, let's take a look at how Declare plays this. So he plays small. The ace wins the trick. Of course, West doesn't know that his partner is not leading away from the king. And this is a smart switch. We switch to the king of diamonds. Looking at the queen and dummy, this is very clearly asking our partner for a count signal in the suit. You know, uh, we wouldn't lead the king if we didn't have the ace. Well, we might. Uh, if we need our partner to have the diamond ace, but we do have the ace, and when this holds, everyone at the table is going to know it. Maybe not Declare, but East will. So East is going to do his best to give his partner a count signal so that he knows if Declare is roughing the second round of diamonds, and therefore we can't cash the ace. So let's take a look. The nine of diamonds looks like they're playing upside down count from this. Oh! Um, well, I'm not sure what went wrong here. Now, there is the possibility that nothing went wrong, and maybe West has worked out that the only chance to defeat the contract 
is to try and give partner a diamond rough. Or to try and cash the ace of diamonds and whatever else it is that he's thinking. Um, that seems plausible, given that as West we're looking at no club tricks, we know the heart finesse is working, the partner has at most the king of spades remaining. Um, so it could be that West was just trying to cash the second diamond before playing a spade, and then hoping by some miracle that they're able to produce an extra trick somewhere. Uh, but okay, Declare roughs this, which I think is going to make the remainder of the hand fairly easy. So Declare now goes after the trump suit, the king of clubs holds, we cross to the king of spades, lead another club up through the ace, and once the ace is out, now Declare can claim. So Declare has the remainder of the tricks, even if a heart wasn't returned, we could cross to the ace of hearts, use one of our spade winners to discard the other heart, the diamond queen is high. So 10 tricks for Declare. Let's take a look at the other table on this board. And so, yeah, like I've mentioned here, we notice a large difference in the auction. So North Pass is in first seat. Pass by East, South declines to open. The only sensible opening choice, I would say, would be three club preempt. This hand really misses the mark by a large number of factors here. We're missing the seventh club, of course. We have all of these extra queens outside, so our hand is fairly defensive, which makes it so that we actually want to defend, whereas normally preempts often suggest that we want to be playing offense. Um, our distribution is really poor, and our club suits may be a little weak. I mean, in third seed, I mean, anything goes. But yeah, so this hand doesn't really look like a three club preempt. I think it's just not the right quality of hand to open one club in third seat, um, but that could be a consideration as well. But okay, so south passes and west opens a no trump, 15 to 17. Now north is able to come in with two clubs showing the majors, and I would say this is the absolute best possible scenario for north having passed originally. Most of the time, if west had opened, say, a diamond, we wouldn't be able to show both majors with, say, a two-diamond cubid, because that would show 5-5 five five in the two suits. But here, over a no-trump, two clubs could be bid on 5-4 shape. I suppose in very rare circumstances, it could be on 4-4 four four shape, uh, maybe not with a passed hand. But yeah, here, so North is able to show his whole hand with one bid. Um, but unfortunately, even in this case, South doesn't have a fit, so North, uh, so they never found their clubs on this auction. So two clubs by North, two diamonds by East looks just like uh, we're playing two diamonds. Okay, yeah, um, that's pretty reasonable. I think a lot of players would turn off stamen or any sort of systems when North has shown both majors. Obviously, we don't really have any need anymore to transfer to a major suit, and bidding stamen is also sort of out of the question. So it seems like East would have doubled to show clubs. Well, double probably suggests penalty of one of the suits, um, but two diamonds is natural, showing diamonds. We could bid two no trump if we wanted to invite. And two diamonds passes out. I, I mean, I understand North has already showed his hand, so there's no reason to bid anymore. And South, hearing majors from partner, doesn't think they have a fit. So that ends the auction. So East has won the contract in two diamonds. Let's take a look at the opening lead choices. So South, Queen 10, third of diamonds is a bit of, it's like right on the border where I might think I already have a natural trump trick. And on hands where we already have a natural trump trick, we don't really want to go seeking a rough, because then we would be roughing with our natural trump trick. Now, of course, if your natural trump trick is like queen jack 10, or like queen 10 fourth, then you might want to seek a rough, because then your queen 10 third will still... <laughs> that took me a while, but I got there eventually. Yeah, so queen 10 fourth, you might want to seek a rough, because then you will still have queen 10 third in reserve to collect one trump trick. So... With that said, 
you know, we might not want to lead a heart or a spade hoping that we get a rough. Now on the flip side, those are both of our partner suits, in which case we might want to lead through the no trump bidder towards partner strong suits, as opposed to doing something like leading the king of clubs, which is our strength, uh, setting up a club trick, but maybe not ultimately the best opening lead. So from South's perspective, I think I might lead a heart. It is the safest lead among everything. Um, and the reason being, kind of like I said, we're leading through the strong hand, the no trump opener, towards one of partner's uh, suits. And there is still this worry in the back of my mind that maybe queen, ten, third of diamonds really just isn't strong enough to produce a trick in trumps. Um, so south does lead a heart, as I kind of guessed. Declare is going to take a heart finesse, even though he probably knows it's futile. The queen of hearts holds. And now let's take a look from north's perspective. North sees quite a strong dummy. I mean, as far as east knew when he bid two diamonds, west could have had a small doubleton. So ace king fourth is obviously a pleasant surprise for east. On the steal, we don't have a lot of information about the distribution of high cards, or the distribution of the heart suit for that matter. This ten of hearts could have been played from a doubleton or three cards. We wouldn't expect partner to lead the seven of hearts if he held nine, seven, six. So um, even though declare false carded, this isn't really going to fool uh, North all that much. But um, otherwise, our prospects don't look all that appetizing, I would say, in terms of beating the contract. I mean, King Jack, 10, 9 of spades, yeah, if partner has the queen, we can set up some, some tricks, but if partner doesn't have the queen, then we only have one trick in spades. So if we're really trying to count to six tricks, I guess we would have two hearts, we would need two spade tricks, and we probably need a club trick and a diamond trick. So from the perspective of trying to defeat the contract, and this is a very important concept of imps, where there's not a large imp difference between a score of, say, minus 130 versus minus 90, right? That would be the opponents making 10 tricks in four diamonds versus um, making only... Am I counting this correctly? Hold on. <laughs> uh, two diamonds. Oh, no, I am... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten, ten tricks and two diamonds versus minus 90, which would be um, them making eight tricks. Uh, <clears throat> it's been so long since I've scored any sword bridge hands. Uh, okay. But there is a large difference between a score between the scores of minus 90 and plus 50 if we defeat their contract. That, I mean, I think is, a bit, is three imps if I'm correct, but that's on the very high end of the 3 imp scale. It might even be 4 imps up there. Yeah, I think 130 to 160 is 4 imps, so that's a 4 imp difference as opposed to the 2 over tricks, which 40 points is only worth 1 imp. So I think as North I would try for that. I would assume my partner has the spade queen, I would hope and pray that my partner has a diamond trick somehow, or that declare just caches the ace-king and doesn't pick up partner's queen, and I would hope that my partner has a club trick, and I would hope that we can do all of this before I declared starts discarding some losers. So to set up all of this, I suspect I need to switch to spades now. If I try and give partner a heart rough, then I might succeed in getting partner a heart rough, but Remember, that was one of the tricks that I was already counting on defense for partner to have a diamond trick, for us to have any chance of defeating this contract. And in the process, I'm setting up a heart where Declare will be able to pitch one of his spade losers. You know, little do I know that Declare will be pitching his club loser, but um, that's what I would be thinking about. So I think a spade switch is a difficult thing to do, and at match points, this is probably not the correct play. At match points, we probably just either switch to clubs or maybe try and give partner a heart rough if we're feeling a little uh, feisty about it. But 
At Teams, we really want to try and beat the contract, and a spade switch is the most likely way to do that. So North elects to cache the hard ace. Everyone follows. And at this point, we probably just have to commit to leading another round of hearts. Um, we should play the eight to give partner a suit preference signal for spades. We don't want clubs to come back. But Declarer is able to just discard his club loser on this trick. And when South roughs, that was roughing with what may have been a natural diamond trick. So a spade comes back, Declarer is able to hop up with the ace, play the jack of clubs to the ace. This line of play is very confusing to me. <laughs> uh, because we don't... Well, it is possible. We can cross to the ace of clubs and rough a club to take two diamond finesses, but are we really doing that? <laughs> like if... So once we play a club to the ace, let's just pause for a second, because Let's suppose we elect to lead the Jack of Diamonds, right? We're very certain that Jack of Diamonds is going to go... Uh, we're taking a finesse um, in this circumstance. Then, if South doesn't play the Queen, and we decide to duck this trick, North can win the Singleton Queen and play yet another heart to give South a rough, since now we don't have high diamonds to control in our hand, and then we still end up losing two spades. So this seems unnecessarily risky to me. Now maybe part of the read is that North and First Seat didn't open with both the Ace Queen of Hearts and what looks like the King of Spades for his both spade signal and um, two club overcall. So the Queen of Diamonds would bring him up to 11 high cards, and we're getting close to an opening bid here. But yeah, this seems a bit... Oh my, he actually went for it. This is crazy to me. So if, if North does win the Singleton Queen of Diamonds here... Um, you know, okay, I take all of those back. I suspect what's going to happen here is if South did not play the queen, Declare would have just hopped up with the ace and cashed the king. So this might be a basically no risk possibility where we're trying get, to get South to lazily cover with the queen of diamonds from a holding of queen 10 third, thinking that, oh, Declare has no way back to his hand anymore, right? But we know that Declare can actually rough a club. Um, but okay, in this circumstance, the jack does get covered, and Declare pulls trumps and now just concedes two spades. Oh, it doesn't concede two spades, but yes, he roughs a club and then hopes that the spades are kind of blocked in some way. They're not. So North is able to overtake and cash a spade. But that's still eight tricks for Declare. And a well-deserved uh, double part score swing, which nets six imps on the first board to the Spectre team. Okay, now that we've got the uh, child's play out of the way, let's jump into one of these slam hands. I know I'm eager. I hope you've been eager as well. So let's take a look at which one of these I want to explore first. Um, or only, I suppose I'm only going to cover one more hand in this recap. Let's look at board seven, in fact, because board three, maybe someone got a bit overzealous, but board seven, both pairs found hearts, and one of them just elected not to bid the slam. So let's take a look at what happened. Wow, that is a lot of clubs in West's hand. Okay. South of this table, 13 highs, opens a diamond, and West decides to jump to four clubs. It's hard to fault the bid. Um, one of the things I like about a four level preempt like this, so four of a minor specifically, is you're bringing partner into the equation. So West, of course, could have done something like bid three clubs, which would be a little cowardly, or West could have just taken it on himself and said, 
I'm sacrificing with this hand no matter what. I'm going to bid five clubs, put them to the ultimate test. We'll see if they reach um, five hearts or decide to go after me. But four clubs kind of brings partner into the picture because a lot of the time the opponents are going to make a takeout double or negative double or something and find a fit somewhere and bid up to a game, right? So they'll reach four hearts or four spades some reasonable amount of the time. And now that we've preempted, partner gets the last say. Partner can decide, oh, I want to sacrifice in five clubs, or I want to defend four hearts, or I want to double four hearts. There are a whole lot of things that partner can do, and we don't know anything about the hand. All we've heard is South opens a diamond. So this four club bid does bring partner into the picture for later decisions. And on a hand like this, we do have the heart king, that could be a defensive asset. Our clubs are fairly weak, but we do have a lot of them. And otherwise, our distribution isn't great. So our hand feels fairly middling for a four club bid. It kind of perfectly describes what we have. And therefore, partner is going to picture almost this exact hand when he's making a decision about whether or not to defend four hearts, save in five clubs, double the opponents, all of these things. So. From that perspective, I really like the four club bid. North here, doubles, which in general is just going to be a negative double. It doesn't say anything uh, really else about North hand. And South bids four hearts. I mean, South has no nothing extra. We come back to North's decision, and North has a great hand, opposite an opening bid, and especially the four club preempt, but you know, if we ignore the club queen, this is 15 highs. The opponents have put us under a lot of pressure. Yes, we probably have a heart fit, but our hearts are a little weak. Um, our spades are fairly weak. The diamonds look excellent. But this hand just might be a little too much to go exploring for a slam. So I support North's decision in passing, I think it is a difficult position to be in. Um, but, you know, slam could obviously make, but sometimes the opponents preempt, and you just, you really want to get out with a plus score when the opponents preempt in these kinds of hands, even at imps. So, okay. Uh, looking at the hand, I suppose as West I would lead my singleton. It is possible South has the heart ace, and therefore, even if we get a heart rough, we might still score the heart king when Declare takes a finesse. So, Singleton Spade is led. From Declare's perspective now, I would absolutely want to win the King of Spades here. And the reason has very little to do with me wanting to take a heart finesse next, even though that's what I'm going to do, but it's that if I won the Spade Ace, and then, you know, I crossed to the Ace of Clubs in my hand and took a Heart Finesse, East could win the Heart King and return another Spade. When I cover, this could easily get roughed by West. And I don't want that to happen. So if I win the Spade King and leave the Ace and Dummy, when East returns into second Spade, if I play small and West roughs, I will still have the Ace of Spades. I can then decide to play a small one after West has played a Trump on this strike. So, Declare wins the King of Spades, leads a heart. Oh, this is very safe. Um, and maybe this is actually called for in the four heart contract. One thing that a lot of experts do is consider the possibilities of what could happen in other contracts at other tables. And in this case, South's looking at this hand and says, we're only in four hearts. If our opponents do reach a slam, slam is going to make unless the king of hearts is offside and um, something else happens. Um, you know, something else unusual happens, right? So because the opponents can just take a heart finesse and then basically claim. I mean, they have all the tricks. They have five diamonds, two spades, a club, and four hearts. So we are going to assume the king of hearts is offside, because otherwise slam would make, 
And therefore, what is the best play? Well, we should play a heart to the ace. That will stop any sort of unusual cross rough from happening. You know, maybe a spade comes back roughed if we lose our finesse. Then a diamond comes through, which gets roughed. Then another spade gets roughed. And in those circumstances, we can protect ourselves by pulling extra trumps. So we play a heart to the ace. We play a heart back to the ten and king. And after the king of clubs gets returned, we have 12 tricks. So let's take a look at what happened at the other table. Okay, so at the other table, North took a bit rosier view of his hand after a very similar auction, a diamond, four clubs, double by North, four hearts by South, and now North just decides to blast key card. This is an okay decision. Um, again, I think preamps are tough, and if you can picture a hand that partner can have, hopefully several different hands partner can have, then exploring for slam does make sense. South shows two with the trump queen, and at this point you're committed to the to the six level, so you may as well bid six hearts. Uh, all right, so once again, I expect the singleton spade lead. We get that, and again, a spade goes around to the king. And I suppose one thing I hadn't actually looked at was the potential of just playing a heart to be correct in slam as well, because again, our our main hope here is that we can prevent the opponents from roughing any tricks. If we can take three hearts, two spades, one club, five diamonds, and if the hearts do split three two, then we can actually rough a club in the dummy for an extra trick and rough a spade in our hand, we're going to make our slam. So taking a heart finesse has kind of the downside that we might not be able to do all of that. Um, or the opponents just immediately get a spade rough, for example. The spade lead does smell a bit like a singleton. Um, so, with that being said, it does kind of make sense to lead a heart to the ace. Now one alternative that we want to be a little careful about is what if hearts are 4-1 with east having king fourth? In that case, when we play a heart to the ace, and we try and pull more trumps, we really need to be roughing a club before um, before anything to, before we get too involved in pulling trumps, because otherwise, East could pull four rounds of trump and leave us then with only 11 top tricks. So there is that consideration. In that sort of scenario, we would want to play a heart to the jack, take the finesse, and then maybe duck a heart. Um, but when the queen of hearts held, then we could play ace of clubs, club rough, ace of hearts, and then just run all of our top tricks. Um, <clears throat> so let's see what Declarer does. He does play a heart to the ace and plays another heart back. And with the heart splitting 3-2, there's not much to the rest of the hand. No roughs are going to be given, and Declarer can just claim 12 tricks. So, kind of a cute little safety play of sorts in a slam. You rarely get to see those. Uh, but a nice win for the Rosenthal team on this board. Nonetheless, overall, it looks like Spectre got the better of them. They had a large number of just better part score decisions, it looks like, at most of the tables. We looked at board one where they played part scores on both hands, but then board 10, they didn't overreach to a game that it looks like didn't make. Board 11, they did get to game and won a swing. Board 12, it looks like they were able to declare at both tables and win a small part score swing there. So overall, uh, Pretty good start for the Spectre team. They're ahead 32 imps after the first segment. And join me again tomorrow as we look at the second segment of the semifinal match. See you then.